Welcome back. It's Jobs Friday in both the U.S. and in Canada. Our country added twice as many jobs as expected in February, indicating that the Bank of Canada could need to raise rates once again to tame hot inflation. This comes after the Bank of Canada's decision to hold steady on its rates most recently. Let's go to an expert. He's Royce Mendez, head of macro strategy at Desjardins. Royce, thanks a lot for joining us. We'll talk about both Canada and the U.S. here. Let's begin with Canada. 21,800 jobs added to the economy during February and an unemployment rate of 5.0%. Uh, that jobs number uh, more than double what was expected, although, as we know, expectations are uh, very, very difficult. It's very difficult for you and your colleagues to benchmark uh, where these numbers are going. What, what is the takeaway here for the Bank of Canada? Well, looking through all the volatility, this jobs number adds on to the 220,000 jobs that were created in December and January. And so I worry that we're on an unsustainable track. We keep seeing more and more jobs being created, which is obviously great news for Canadians that are finding jobs. Uh, but we're seeing wage growth pick up to, to levels that are going to make the Bank of Canada uncomfortable. At 5.5% five five on year-over-year -year wage growth, the Bank of Canada will view that as inconsistent with its 2% inflation target. And I worry that this is setting up the possibility for further rate hikes down the road this year. Is that your base case scenario, more rate hikes from the BOC? At this point, I'd say we're hanging on by a thread, assuming that the Bank of Canada will not raise rates any further in, uh, in the course of uh, the rest of this year. Uh, but that hinges now very heavily on the upcoming inflation report. The Bank of Canada said yesterday and the day before that it needs to see further cooling in some of the core inflation measures, uh, particularly services inflation and three-month annualized rates of underlying inflationary pressures. Um, and if we don't see that, I think there would be uh, enough reason to believe that the Bank of Canada needs to move off the sidelines and get back into the rate hiking game. You said in a note this morning, uh, shortly after the numbers were released, that the quality of job creation was high with 31,000 full-time positions added in the month. So that uh, there would have been a subtraction of some part-time jobs to bring the number down to 21,800. But what does that uh, so-called high quality of job creation mean, perhaps to the stubbornness of wage growth? Well, that just means that people are earning solid incomes in these jobs. They're getting full-time hours. So we're seeing incomes rise. We're also seeing the production side of the economy increase as well. You saw the number of hours worked increase by a very strong 0.6% in the month of February. That takes our GDP tracking to roughly 2% annualized for the first quarter of this year, which would easily sail past the Bank of Canada's forecast of 0.5%. When you look at it in the totality of a couple of quarters, the fourth quarter, the economy undershot the Bank of Canada's GDP forecast, but this quarter will overshoot the Bank of Canada's forecast by so much that the economy will be operating at a higher level, most likely, after the first quarter. Again, this points to uh, evidence accumulating that the economy is not following the path laid out in the Bank of Canada's January monetary policy report. And it is pointing towards central bankers uh, potentially needing to reconsider uh, their decision to uh, to pause rates uh, for the time being. Let's go to the U.S. There, the Fed has not made any pledge to to uh, pause rates. Quite the contrary has been the signaling from Jerome Powell, and we get another jobs report that, uh, by uh, by I think a fairly wide margin, exceeded expectations. Some three hundred and eleven thousand jobs. Uh, added to the U.S. economy, many more than the roughly 250 that was expected uh, by the economics uh, community. What, what's your take on the, that U.S. jobs release? So the headline job uh, jobs number, I agree with you, exceeded expectations. But we're focusing on, on the unemployment rate, which ticked up. The number of unemployed people um, in the U.S. increased, suggesting that there may have been some at least marginal easing of labor market tightness. And we did see job grow, uh, wage growth decelerate a little bit. Uh, we saw um, the three-month annualized rate of wage growth uh, move to 3.6% from about 4.5% a month ago. And, and so that's going to be indicative of what to expect in, in the future course of consumer prices. Obviously, 
the Federal Reserve is worried about wage push inflation from this very low unemployment rate and very tight labor market. But if we're seeing wage growth decelerate a little bit here, uh, they can be a little bit more comfortable um, with taking a, a slower approach to raising interest rates. So, so combined with what we've seen in terms of uh, uh, some volatility in markets driven by uh, worries about the U.S. financial system this morning and yesterday, I think we're we're still uh, comfortable expecting the Federal Reserve to raise rates by 25 basis points this month, and then with subsequent 25 basis point rate hikes in the in the subsequent two meetings. Um, I do think, though, that the wage growth number, the cooler wage growth number, and the tick higher in the unemployment rate um, should remo largely remove uh, the risk of a 50 basis point rate hike unless there's a big surprise in the up upcoming inflation uh, data in the U.S.